welcome to the Conception Channel Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Conception Channel Podcast brought to you by the Being Fertile Program and the Instill Reproductive Wellness. I am your host, Spence Pentland, and today I'm really excited to be able to speak with our special guest, Sue Dumay. Welcome to the show, Sue. Thanks, Spence. Great to be here. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Sue is here today to uh, help people navigate their fertility journey using uh, a heart-led uh, approach or their heart and their intuition to guide them, which is, so resonates with, with me and my practice. I, I love that, Sue. Thank you. And, and some practical um, take-homes today that, uh, that she'll help with on how to get out of your head and more into your heart, which I'm excited about because uh, more pearls, more pearls, more, more actionable items to uh, help people. This is a, a tough time. So, um, if you just a little tiny bit of housekeeping um if you haven't already done so at the bottom of this podcast page you can you can subscribe and be notified whenever new podcasts are posted we're also on youtube apple itunes podcast like i was just telling sue and you can leave a review when you're there that'd be great and also facebook it's the yin still reproductive wellness page but without further ado i'm gonna give a brief intro to to sue we were talking about um how to do this because she's led such a great life. She's a change maker. She's not busy. She's accomplishing her purpose. Um, <laughs> uh, love the framing. Uh, but uh, uh, more specifically, uh, her professional f- profile, you know, uh, consists of fertility yoga instruction. She's an instructor there and she does teacher training for that as well. Um, she's a certified intuitive healer. Uh, she's a mind body specialist. Um, she's an ordained ministerial counselor. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Awesome, Sue. Uh, an international author and speaker and heart-led living coach and trainer for intuitive coaches. I, you know, since we've spoken, Sue and I have known each other for years and, and at times a lot more than others. And this has been a little gap here. So I'm excited to, to spend some time with you because um, there's more, more, more. There's more. <laughs> There's and, a lot that's happened in the last five or six years. Yeah, yes. that's great. And I um so in in honor of you know these podcasts, I love like I mentioned to kind of dive back into your story, kind of introduce the 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 hero and 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 tell everybody a l- little bit about who you are and where you came from and how you became the person that is helping people in the way you are today. Well, that's always a, a bit of a loaded question because oh, you always yeah. <laughs> the question is really where do I always where do you begin to yeah. to kind of capture that? But uh, as I teach heart led living, I'll just drop into my heart and see where to begin from there. Perfect. When I was a child, I would sit in a room and tap into everybody's emotions. I would feel their physical pain in their body, but I was I would also tune into their emotions. And as a child, it was very intense. So it was very hard for me to be in a room with other people. Mm -hmm. So I ended up being very much a quiet, shy little girl. But on the outside, it felt like nothing was happening. Everybody thought I was just Sue sitting in the corner watching everybody or Mm -hmm. or hiding over there. And really on the inside, there was so much turmoil going on. Not only my own thoughts and my my, my own mind, but everything just coming at me in all different directions. So my gift as an intuitive healer was something I was born with. And growing up, I actually thought it was a curse. Mm. I thought I was being punished because it was so painful and I didn't understand it. At one point, and it was actually shortly after I had my own fertility journey begun, when my fertility journey started, I found myself pregnant. I was very excited. I was, I was thrilled actually to be a mom. And the idea of changing kind of the course of my life was, was thrilling actually. And it felt really like in my heart, like this knowing like, oh, this is it. This is a real part of my path, my heart's path. And shortly after I had miscarried and it was probably the most shocking. I didn't expect that, but also devastating physically and emotionally because I had some physical complications from that as well. It took about two years to conceive my son. 
And in that time, I, I really had a challenging time getting over my mind chatter and the, the intensity of what was going on mentally and emotionally for me with every cycle. It was a roller coaster. And I had support through acupuncture. I had support through my yoga practice and meditation. And I found that, that w those were really those points of foundation to help me maintain some, rembl some semblance of peace. And once I conceived my son, because I had a previous miscarriage, I was still nervous and afraid. And it took about five months into the pregnancy till I could somewhat settle down. Shortly after that, I was really inspired to start teaching yoga for fertility and supporting other women and couples through that because I had found another way to bring myself to peace. And I realized that there was so many more women out there that were really struggling and they didn't have the tools or the understanding or or even the shift in perspective that could actually completely change their experience so that they, instead of feeling out of control they can feel a sense of uh, purpose as they're moving through their journey so it really brought me into this powerful path um, of my own personal journey but then also extending that support and help th for other women as well and I did that through the intuitive healing, but also through the support groups and the fertility yoga as well. Mm -hmm. Wow! Yes, I, that I, somewhere in that that uh, that timeline is when when we met, and I know uh, from a clinical perspective, we sent you know a lot of uh, women and to you for for the yoga for fertility in particular, and uh, um, so so okay. And, and that was hugely successful, but you've, you've moved online and you've moved into other elements. So what is, what does your practice look like today or, or what are you, what are you up to exactly? Can you, can you kind of outline that or? Yeah, I've, I've started a, my, my new business is called Heart Led Living. Okay. So it's kind of evolved organically from mm -hmm. what I was doing. I still have the fertility yoga online. And but the support has changed in the way of, of I'm supporting all women and men actually to really find that place within themselves that knows that knows what their path is that knows what what they're meant to do and then they can take inspired action from there. So when you can actually get out of the head and into the heart and lead from that place, then the steps are given. So what I do is I teach people through the coaching, through meditation, and through intuitive healing. I help them kind of remove the blocks right. in their mind, uh, clear the, the programming that's no longer serving, unwind the mind from the fears and the programmed stuff that we have going on, mm -hmm. and really get them to tune into their heart and trust it. Trust it more than anything else. And from there, they really find that uh, their path is more clear and, and, and they're able to navigate it a lot easier a lot yeah because the i mean everyone <clears throat> i mean there's some common denominators in in how women and and men experience you know struggles such as having difficulty conceiving or, or carrying a pregnancy but there is also hugely individual you know uh, uh journeys and processes that go on um how what are some of the, you know, what are some of the benefits or are there some people maybe that benefit from, you know, how you help more than others or, or some people that maybe aren't quite ready or, or that could really, 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 really use some time with you or, or in, in something similar that you're doing? Like, I, I know that was about eight questions. <laughs> no, no, I get what you're asking. Okay. I'll, I'll, let, me just, let me just share what's on my heart there. When it comes to the, the work I do, you know, if someone wants to come in and kind of learn a different way of, of being in their life and navigating their fertility journey, the best kind of first step would be my Heart Led Living book right. and the fertility yoga classes. Those are kind of a nice introduction to the work I'm doing. Okay. For those that really want to go deep and and look at all the nitty-gritty clear those emotional blocks and those physical blocks and the energy blocks and through the intuitive healing then I would say yeah let's dive in and go deep there with the one-on-one -on -one work right. now not everybody's ready for that right 
And it's not for everyone, actually. And and I, I always encourage people to actually, one, to trust their intuition. So if you come to the to any website, any book, I, I don't care what it is, if it's mine or anyone else's, when you're reading through it, when you're when you're reviewing whatever you're reviewing, feel into it. Don't think about it. Don't think, oh, that sounds good, or so-and-so said this. It's like, that's a very heady process. I always say, feel it. Feel it in your heart. Feel it in your body. You'll know there'll be something there. So there'll be either a resonance or a discord. There'll be a lightness or an expansion or an excitement, or there'll be a heaviness or a contraction or a density. It's that expansion that we're looking for. It's that curiosity. It's that, hmm, it's that wonderment. That's the energy of, of intuition. That's the energy of the heart. And when we can read through something, so if someone comes to my website and they're looking at my intuitive coaching or my um, intuitive healing page, it actually says right on there, they need to feel a heart yes to work with me. Right. And I need to feel a heart yes to work with them. So if I've had it where times when people have come to me more out of desperation and fear, just wanting to try everything. And I actually say, you know, I, I don't feel this is for you. I don't feel I'm the one to support you. And I'm honest that way because I trust my intuition more than anything else now. And that's what I want for other people. So if I can actually honor my intuition and say, okay, this isn't the way, there's there's a path for you, but it's not this door. Um, if right. I can support you in another way, let me know. But it's like sometimes people just need help navigating that direction. And that's where joining with other people that are intuitive is helpful because then we can help confirm. Right. Yes, that's what you're getting. Yes, you're feeling that, you're sensing that. I feel that too for you. And it's confirmation. So it builds confidence for people. I mean, it, even for people who aren't it, going through a, a journey of, of cultivating and their fertility and, and uh, toward building family, it, it, you know, all things equal, it's difficult sometimes to understand if you're thinking or if you're feeling. And, you know, and, uh, and, and then that next level would be intuition, you know, uh, and it's especially when, you know, you start, you know, you realize that you're maybe having some difficulties conceiving, it's been too long. Um, and your first step is basically always to go see your family doctor. So there's, uh, you know, there's this mechanical process set in motion. Um, so how, you know, when do people usually, you know, come to, to, to a point where they, you know, want to explore deeper or, and two parts, when, when would you recommend them, uh, actually starting to, to lead more with their heart? Like yesterday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was a rhetorical question. But okay. um, okay. When you're born, we're yeah, we're yeah. born. We're born intuitive. We're born. You can watch infants. You can watch children. They're intuitively navigating the world. That's how we're naturally born. We're programmed to think. We're programmed yeah. to be logical. We're programmed to to weigh the pros and cons. And and that's not natural for us. That's not our natural process. That's natural for the mind. Right. It's natural for the head. But, I, but we've basically got to a point where we're born leading with the heart, with the mind just kind of going along for the ride. Right. And it switches to lead with the head and the heart is just kind of, you know, the passenger. And sometimes you'll listen to the passenger, sometimes you won't. But I'm my encouragement is to bring the heart back into the driver's seat mm -hmm. and let the mind be the tool it's designed to be, right. which is to support the heart and that knowing. So... The, we have this knowledge in our head and we can gain knowledge. We can gain a lot of knowledge. And I know on fertility journey, there's, there's more information out there when my journey started. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's more of like, you know, too, a lot more research you can do. And I know that a lot of people will desperately research because they're desperate for an answer. Mm. And that's like gaining knowledge. So you have more knowledge than the head kind of gets in the way even more because you think, you know, or you think you don't know, you think something's missing. So if you can actually let go of what you think you know, let go of what you think you don't know, and then drop down into the heart space and say, I don't know. I don't know anything, but I'm curious. So then you shift from knowledge in the head to knowing 
in the heart. Mm. And the knowing in the heart goes beyond the on the mind. It goes beyond the filters and the programming. It just is a knowing in the heart. And when you follow that knowing, you can take what the doctor says. You can take what your friend says as advice. You can take what you read and bring it into your heart and go, what resonates? Right. What feels good for me? Because there's no one recipe for anybody, for any anything, other than lead with your heart. That, that could be a recipe. Everybody can do that. But where it leads you is going to be different. Right. Yeah. Some people must struggle with that, though, or, you know, that, that difference between that heart and the head. It's like, because the ego and the mind is very brilliant, and it can even trick you into thinking that you're feeling. <laughs> or, yeah. Did I say it's that right? <laughs> it's very tricksy. Absolutely. It's very tricksy. And that's part of my gift is actually I can feel and sense the ego. Right. So I, when someone says something, I'm like, nope, something's off. I can actually, because that's my, that's my, my little spidey senses, right? That's my gift. Yeah. So to be able to work with somebody and say, well, I'm really feeling this. And I'm like, I'm not sure that that's intuition. I get that you're feeling drawn toward that, but there's something else leading you there. It's actually fear-based. It's right. disguised as love. It's disguised as guidance. So as much as I say, oh, get out of your head and into your heart, sounds simple. It is not easy. Yeah. It's not easy because we've been so programmed to the opposite. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is it's not, it's it's a process of unwinding right. the programming, opening the mind again, and then remembering, remembering our natural mm -hmm. way of being, which is intuitive. We're all intuitive beings. And when we start to allow that remembering, it becomes easier. And then when we have other people confirm, so when I work with people and I'm like, yep, no, it feels good. It feels like you're on track. I agree that that's your guidance. That's, that's your intuition. It's bang on. Follow that. Then they actually get that confidence. Right. And they start to really kind of trust it again. I, uh, do you, you do distance um, uh, consultation over Skype or phone or, or oh. however it is? Yep. Um, I, my best experience, I mean, this is my personal experience, but my best experience, uh, in it, it's more framed as coaching. Um, but over the years is for the, my spiritual self has been distance, um, over the phone. It's allowed me to, you know, sit in my underwear in a very comfortable comfortable spot in my my room where I can really feel uh, safe and and connect and and be completely genuine because as soon as you're in front of someone even us you know where we put on a bit of a face maybe you're not but because um, <laughs> you're this is your thing but I mean we, we present ourselves right and yeah. you you can kind of bring that down when you're when you're with someone especially when they're intuitive the phone doesn't matter doesn't matter the connection which is so I'm, I'm so happy that you're doing that over the phone because otherwise you're um you're unreachable you know and well yeah and that's that's been that was the challenge when i actually had my studio is mm. there was so many clients i could see and then there were so many clients that it could actually reach me yeah there was a lot but like so now i have like more my like clients in the uk and germany and it's like all over the world and and to 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 dissolve all geographical boundaries yeah. by doing the distance healing is such a gift. But my ability, it's grown like, I know I did a session, I think I did a session with you a long time ago when yeah, I first yeah. started mm -hmm. to do the yoga therapy yeah. and the energy mm -hmm. healing. And it's like 10,000 times more powerful. And it blows my mind. Oh, I, it, I'm in awe mm -hmm. of the miracles that happened. I can do in one session what I couldn't do in 10 right. before. And it's powerful because I believe in my gifts so much and I've, I'm owning it and I'm really trusting it, mm -hmm. it it's, I can get right in underneath and clear stuff that has taken a lifetime for others to clear. Yeah. So, so I love that, that there's options now for people, no matter where you're living, right. to have support. Right. And even support groups. I know there's more virtual support groups and virtual meetup groups and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I love the support that's out there now for fertility clients, but at the same time, it can be overwhelming. It's yeah. just like, well, there's so much more now. How do I choose? Right. Here. Yeah, <laughs> Go yeah. here. Go to the heart. Choose there. And mm -hmm. if there's 10 of them, 
look at the 10 and maybe one jumps out or maybe one feels a little bit more highlighted than the other. So in the beginning, your intuition can feel a little subtle right. and then it'll actually start to become more obvious. Right. And the more you trust it, it'll become more and more obvious. It's like learning to ride a bike again. Awesome. So we will get to the uh, some of those things like I suspect you know, meditative practice is one on the list of things that you can do to quiet your mind so your heart is, that whisper can still be heard because it is quite quiet and it doesn't scream at you like your ego and it's and it's a, it's a skill set almost that you need to clearly, it's it to develop. Um, but I, you know, it, with my career as well, being similar in, in length, I think, and focus uh, to yours, you know, I have gotten to a place as well where where the mechanics of of what I do, which might have been your yoga, and uh, has really become it's a still an essential piece of things, but it it's become less and less, and it's it's something I want to get uh, down pat with everyone that I meet with as quickly as possible, so we can get out of the mechanics of the body and 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 have a system in place put gift wrap that so we can surrender to the, the fact that we're doing as much as we can in that realm so we can move into the heart led or the the more spiritual principles timeless principles that are are you know in my experience as, as yours i expect essential to to address and face and cultivate and and practice to to accomplish anything in in life with with uh being fulfilled while doing it um so so i i this what you're talking about resonates so so deeply and and i would never you know it may be partly where i'm at in life but it's also you know uh, i've just seen such profound effect and 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 it and it being an area where you know it's so clear to someone like yourself or myself who spends time with with a lot of women and men you know, struggling to conceive, uh, that is just un not addressed and, and difficult to to navigate. But but isn't there a, a nice trend in this direction because of people like yourself? You know, and you know, so when someone comes to see me now versus ten years ago, yeah, they've gone to see their 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 MD and maybe in testing with their REI and 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 all these things, which is important. You know, um, to to get those balls in motion if that's something that you want uh, and uh, but also there there's just more of a knowing now that there's more to this that i need to step into and and i think that's largely because of you know the uh uh you know people like you you know being what pioneer would be would be a term for it mm -hmm. so thank you for that um Sue, this energy you're getting from Sue is Sue. That's who she is. Um, and and I think she embodies where she wants people to step into. And, and, and that is my interpretation. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, um, I, as well as everyone watching now, I'm sure, or listening, sorry, for listeners, want to kind of maybe step into how can I the, how can I quiet the noise? How can I, in my mind, how can I step into this more heart-led living? And you've touched on a couple things, but is there some specifics that people can do? Is there uh, seeds that you can plant that people can fertilize on their yeah, own? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So the there's so many different ways that I can help people navigate from head to heart. Um, but I can share some basic ones that that they can do on their own and practice it, It's like it, it's practice. So the more you practice these tools the easier they'll become and and I'll just I'll Give you a little heads up or a hearts up mm -hmm. <laughs> if if You're finding it one time. It's really easy. And then another time. It's hard It's probably because you're either afraid of what your heart's answer will be or you're resisting the process and that's okay so don't just forgive yourself and 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 let go don't judge and just know that sometimes it'll actually be easier than others so a great way to practice the intuition piece is with stuff that you have no attachment to what the answer is 
Okay. So let's say if you're having dinner, do I have chicken or fish, right? Okay. You can kind of intuitively let your 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 body and your heart kind of lead you, and you're not really attached to what the answer is. Unless you don't like fish, then maybe you will be attached yeah, to yeah, being yeah. chicken, right? Yeah. So you can play with that because mm -hmm. if you're afraid of the answer, then often it'll show up as a block. And then people will think, oh, I'm it's not working, I can't hear. Got no, it. you're afraid to hear. It's probably you're afraid to hear. So let me let me take there's there's two exercises that are coming in. The one I'm just seeing is is an exercise for the for the sixth chakra, this is an energy center here. And this energy center is associated with our insight or our ability to see without the eyes. So our ability to see beyond the mind or beyond the eyes, the physical eyes. Right. And most people on when I work when I work with my fertility clients, that chakra is wide open at the front and completely closed or almost closed at the back or depleted at the back. Okay. And what that, that indicates for me, and this isn't just for fertility clients, I actually see it with a lot of people right now because they're seeking answers outside themselves. They're desperately looking for something for they're seeking a truth or whatever it is. Got it. So when we can kind of when we're trying to seek from the head, it often opens up that chakra and then depletes the back. And then sometimes we can even feel pressure here uh, or in the sinuses as well. Okay. When we're seeking from the heart, there's a, a balance in that that energy center. Okay. So for those of you that are listening um, or watching, all you need to do is put one palm in at the forehead, right between the eyebrows. And then one palm at the back of the head. So we can do that right now. And then close your eyes and take some breaths. And I'm actually energetically going to work with all of you. So this is like, it's evergreen. So no matter who or when you ever listen to this, I'm going to actually navigate and, and move your energy for you. But I'm going to give you the guidance and the idea of what you can do on your own. And at the same time, help facilitate it so that you can have a felt experience of it. And when you have a felt ex experience, you can actually recreate it on your own. So as you bring your awareness to the front on the forehead area, chances are you're gonna feel it's like wide open or strained or feeling uh, dense or heavy or maybe even you have a little pain in the front of the, the head there. And at the back, you might even feel like it's just kind of quiet or not much happening there. And what I'm going to invite you to do first, instead of desperately seeking, what we're going to do is imagine closing the front. Now, initially, people might be like, no, I can't do that because I, I won't be able to see or I'll miss something. I promise you won't miss anything. And what we're going to do is close it like you're closing the curtains. So imagine you could just close the curtains right underneath your palm there in the front. And we're just going to close that front for now. And then we're going to invite a balance between the front and back of that energy center. And as I draw the energy back, you're going to feel a shift. And that's going to give you an experience of the shift that you can then create another time on your own. Hmm. So as I draw that energy back for you, you're going to feel a little bit of a softening or less um, pressure in the front. So there's pressure to find the answer, pressure to seek is softening and letting go. Okay, now you can place your hands down, but keep your eyes closed. And now I'm going to invite you to imagine that in your head, there's an elevator. And as the door opens to the elevator, you could step inside. And imagine there's two buttons, head and heart. And imagine you could push the button to heart and the doors close and it slowly brings you down, down into the elevator, down, down into the heart space. Take some breaths to allow that. And imagine softening your heart space, your whole chest, your whole heart center. And imagine as the elevator arrives in the heart space, the doors open and you could just step out. And as you step out into your heart space, just notice what's happening there. 
You may notice your heart center soft and open, or you might feel that maybe it's a little guarded or a little bit closed. That's okay. And as you step fully into your heart space, imagine that you could open up the gates through the back of the heart center. So between your shoulder blades, there's these beautiful gates that open inward. And as you breathe, just allow this beautiful energy to come in and fill your heart space, giving you a beautiful heart scrub. And we're going to open the front of the heart. Most people have more of an open front anyways. But imagine that front opening. And as you exhale, that energy releases out and loops around the side of you and back in. So there's this beautiful pattern of channel of light, channel of energy coming out through the front of your heart, back in through the back of the heart center, just moving with your breath. As we keep the back of the heart center open, that's where we receive. That's where we receive love. That's where we're open to experience life. And the challenge is when we close one part of our heart center, we often will let the hurt in and then it gets trapped in there. So we want to flush through the hurt, give ourselves permission to feel the sadness and the grief. Just be witness to your fears. It's okay. There's no emotion that's not welcome here. We just want to let those emotions wash through and be felt and experienced. And then I'm going to fill that space with just a bright guiding light. It's already there as a pilot light. I'm just going to make it even brighter for you. So it becomes this beautiful lighthouse, illuminating your path, shining bright on the practitioners you're meant to see, shining light on the books you're meant to read, the supplements you're meant to take, the modalities you're meant to, to explore. And it's going to basically illuminate your path to give you the most direct route to the baby that's meant to come to you, your child. Let go of the timing and just trust. The path is already there. You simply need to take the step that's in front of you. So in this moment as you breathe, you can even ask your heart, what is the step that's in front of me? And I encourage you to go with the first, very first answer that pops in. That's usually the intuition. And then the ego or the ego mind will add on and kind of fill in the rest. So just go with the first thing. Bring that into your heart. Make a conscious choice to follow. And to see if you can actually remain in this space, letting the mind become the passenger, letting your heart take the lead. And like a recipe, you will be given one step at a time, one direction at a time. The heart works in the present moment only, giving you moment to moment directions. It's a beautiful guide. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, imagine you could stay seated there in the heart space. Keep your awareness there. Seeing that beautiful lighthouse illuminating your path. And then bring your awareness back to your physical surroundings, keeping your awareness in your heart. And see if you can open your eyes while still holding yourself in that heart space. So there's this peace that comes when we're down in that space. And there's this quiet that can come in the mind. 
And the ego is very persistent. The ego is very tricksy. And the ego will actually evolve based on your ability to tap into your intuition. So the more and more you get in touch with your intuition, the more and more the ego will evolve to try and convince you to get back into your head. There's, um, I, I have it actually in my Heart Led Living book, I talk about how the ego hijacks even spirituality mm -hmm. and it'll use the language of love itself. So the discernment, the subtle discernment becomes essential over time. But this is a great exercise to kind of bring you down and begin and just know that the ego is going to be there in the in the in the shadows waiting mm. to pounce on you and drag mm. you down in those moments you notice it forgive don't judge bring yourself back down close the close that front of the chakra on the on the forehead if you need to and bring yourself back down into your heart center I really felt a shift from the front to the back. That first, mm -hmm. that that first exercise. Thank you for that, Sue. That was uh, that was great, great exercise. I, uh, yeah, I feel good. I hope I. Uh, if you didn't take the time, you're watching or listening to do that, you can rewind and and maybe if you're not driving, would probably be the best time. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah or, definitely. Or work, working out at the gym, you can rewind and and find this little section again. Um, but yeah, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for the tool. And, uh, um, uh, so, okay. From, from here, you said that is a practice. This is a practice. So it's not something you can learn to do and say, Hey, I've got this new thing and a week goes by and you're diligent. And then you kind of it fades from being a priority where you know where should this be on the type a task list of of things to be doing in 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 someone's journey it should be in front of everything yeah okay agreed so even with me it's like when i when i go to when i get up in the morning it's like i tune into what i'm to eat if i'm to shower first like i just i let my heart lead me in every moment it's like when i say heart led living i mean every aspect of life right. so even with my supplements I tune in as I'm taking as I'm sorting my supplements I'm like oh four of those two of those none of those it, it's like it's just my intuition is like do 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 and it it wasn't that way all the time it was more of a conscious effort and a kind of tuning in mm -hmm. there there's quite a few different kind of tools that I teach I do share a lot in in my book that people can kind of learn to, to, to practice and, and get the hands-on experience with it. Because the more you practice and have the experience of it, the more your trust and your confidence will be built up. Right. Right. And, and I, I would think that, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to work with Sue one-on-one, -on -one, she may be able to even um, individualize these somehow to your, you and, and, even from week to week, I don't know where you're at, you know, and, and maybe something that needs to be thought thought through so you can feel, or is that some of the process of working one-on-one, -on -one? or can you kind of um, give people a snapshot of what it would look like from picking up the phone to... to... Yeah, well, the the one-on-ones are, are more limited right now just because of the nature of my work and... The number of my my the people I'm supporting. So the one on one is definitely if some if you're drawn to it, then yeah, let's do it. And usually it's one or two sessions, and you're off on your own and running. Okay. okay. Um, the best way the one on ones are really like if you're feeling stuck and you need to get under underneath there, or there's like these history anchors that you just can't move through, or if there's some real dense uh, trauma. Right, okay. in the body that needs to be cleared. That's the one-on-one -on -one work. Mm -hmm. The group work I do through my community is actually really powerful because then you're you're there as a witness as I'm working with other people in the group calls. Right. But you're also, you can listen back. You can, there's always new tools that come in. My, my right. gift is always evolving. There's always new tools. And you can actually like ask a question live. You have live access to me every single week. Right. So that's like the best way. If you if you're really wanting to kind of learn this and and get this, and specific to what what the individual needs in each right. moment, then the then the group work is probably a better way to go. And it's definitely more affordable than the one on one work. More affordable. And do you find that women find 
connect with other women through that? Is that capable? Yeah. Ca that capability yeah. is there? Yeah. Yeah. The community is is global. So there's there's women and there's a few brave men as well. Yeah. And <laughs> um, it's basically in listening to other people share their stories. There's a connection. It's not even just the fertility stuff. It's right. it's actually every aspect of life. So someone may be struggling with fertility, but then having issues with their relationship, or right. someone may right. be struggling with fertility and having issues with a physical ailment in the body. So it's it's me kind of intuitively guiding people, meeting them where they're at, and then supporting them in that moment. But it's the practical work that actually really it gives you that fast track sustained results. Right, right, okay. Because yeah. I mean, when you when you step into a holistic uh, perspective of life, you know, it nothing can be removed from mattering. You know, it's yeah. it's not like well, my uterus just I got to focus on that. You know, or or my balls aren't sorry, <laughs> my testicle, whatever. You know, <laughs> you you you've got to take into consideration your happiness at work, your, you know, the amount you breathe, you know, the, you know, what you're eating. And, and I believe with you, ideally, it would all start from, from, from the heart, you know, and, and the spirit. Um, because once you're open, uh, everything else good you're going to do for yourself physically is, is going to be enhanced and, and more effective. That's my yeah. experience. Yeah, you know, for sure. yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to share, can I just jump in and share no, a piece sure. that it's mm -hmm. like, it's kind of like a, a, it's one of those things that most people don't hear about or, or even bring into their awareness when it comes to fertility is their connection to their baby mm. before it comes in physical form. Yeah. So I call them spirit babies. They're, right. they're known as spirit babies. Yeah. And, um, I'm actually in a, a medical, uh, a, a medical intuitive, but I'm also a medium so I can actually connect with the energy of the baby and receive messages. So oh, wow. I've done a lot of work that way and that's made a huge difference. I actually just worked with a client yesterday who was having a miscarriage mm -hmm. and giving her a deeper understanding. So kind of bringing, you got the physical, you've got the emotional and the mental aspects of it, the energy aspects of it, and then that spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. So that little baby was just like, I can't, I can't come yet in this, in this time, in this pregnancy. But she was really adamant. I'm coming. Just it's just a matter of when. So it gave that 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 client a real sense of peace. Mm -hmm. um, there's other times the messages come in and they just need certain things in place that can help them. And and so there's actually tangible, like practical things that that right. couples can do to help support the baby making the choice to come in. Right. So it's 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 kind of neat to bring that spiritual realm into it as well for some people that are open to that right um you can get some really powerful information directly from your baby like what do you need from me right. to help right. support you coming in because it's actually a lot more challenging for spirit to come into physical form than than it is for us to leave and go back to spiritual form it's mm -hmm. actually an easy transition at death right. it's a more challenging transition at birth so sometimes they need a extra support. Birth is not. Yes, I've been through three of them. I believe that. It's just sweet. from being there. Yeah, yeah. Like push them into yeah, that little body. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. Birth is a good term for birth. I um uh I love that. I you know I had I and I love that you touched on. I've got two things. I love that you touched on um, meeting people where they're at. You know I. I often have, have, have paid people that come to you are, are probably, you know, uh, they've searched for you or, or, uh, what they're, you know, more of this heart led, um, uh, uh, direction. But in, with what I do, you know, I, I sometimes get people that are very ready for, for, for this work as well. And others that are, uh, you know, seeing their REI and, and saying, well, there's some research that acupuncture helps to so help. And, and I'm okay, you know, and, and so, so meeting people where they're at, you know, is, is really important. And I love that you have intuition for that. And, uh, because even the spiritual journey is, has got multi layers, I'm sure. And, you know, and, and different things that might resonate, you know, a practice of gratitude for somebody might open them up more, you know, to, uh, but what I do explain to people from personally, from my experience is that if I could boil down what acupuncture does or what I do when I try to work with someone is to open and and because I I have found that like you said can conception is 
largely about reception versus accomplishment, and and uh, and that and that makes sense if you say that it's tougher to get in than it is to get out, and I love that. I um, and you being able to speak with uh, uh, you know uh, spirit babies, I. I have a story that I share with women that have miscarried because I, I think there's a common belief and it may or may not be true. I'm, I, I'm not an authority, but uh, um, that, you know, if a baby comes and there's a miscarriage, that it's a loss and it's that that baby is gone. And I had a uh, story from a colleague uh, from Texas uh, and I've told it for years to, to women that have miscarried just to maybe open them to an idea that something different might be happening because it's exactly what it did to me. He said, you know, uh, a woman that had had uh, two or three losses, I guess a friend maybe said, well, why don't you go try Chinese medicine or, or acupuncture? It might help. I've heard it's helped. So she did and I, she worked with my friend, my colleague for for some time and and she conceived and she carried her pregnancy, you know, and, uh, which is great. Hopefully the Chinese medicine helped. Um, but about four or four and a half years later, I guess this woman comes back into, to, to my friend's clinic and says, uh, with this four year old and, uh, says, you know, I just wanted to stop by. I hadn't been here in a long time and, and, uh, uh, show you, you know, my, you know, the fruit of our efforts and, and, you know, and, uh, but I had he last week he said something to me and that's why I'm here because um, he it, it it changed the way I looked at everything he said mom he, out of the blue he came to me he said mom do you remember the first time I came into your tummy I had to go back because I forgot my fingers and toes that changed <laughs> me when I heard that story it changed me I'm like ah really so it could be the same spirit coming back later. And you yeah. just you just said the same thing. So thank you. I've had that experience over and over again. There's times where even even there's actually some spirit babies that have come in and, and said, I just I just needed that experience in physical form for that short period of time. It was only a month or two, not even born, and that was exactly what their soul needed, and then they were meant to move on. And then others were like, I came, the body wasn't a fit, I had to leave. Right. Or, you know, I had to kind of try it. I was scared. I came, I jumped back out, right, you right, know, so right. it's in, I've heard so many stories like that and, and got so many messages around that. It's like, I love that story. And yeah. there's, there's a beautiful, I remember when, um, I asked my son, I was doing a doula training when my son was really young and they said, Oh, a lot of times the kids that are less than four years old who can articulate actually can remember their birth. And I'm like, Hey, didn't you remember being born? He's like, yeah, I was like, this <laughs> like, really something like that and then at one point he said something like um I, I know his personality and it was like this feeling of like yeah you were never going to be ready I just had to like wiggle my way in there and I was just like even though I was ready on a like yeah. on every other level on some level I wasn't sure so and he picked up on that so it was kind of neat it was uh it was a neat it's neat to have that that confirmation again from right. from the littles in our life when when they have those memories well, when I like what I have seen it, it help with in some subtle ways with a lot of women is is taking uh, or planting the seed of the possibility that they don't need to blame themselves, yeah. that there's something much larger maybe going on yeah. that they have to surrender to. And, yeah. and I love that. That is huge, you know. And, and, and if you also bring in the reframe of when you said it was a loss. Uh, the word I got, it was like, it was a visit. Mm, mm, interesting. It was a short visit. Yeah. And that's what I feel from my miscarriage. It was a short visit. Interesting. And I, and I was really grateful for that. And the, the spirit baby from my first pregnancy was not is not my son. It mm. was not my son. Okay. So I know that. But but she actually had to move on. She wasn't meant to come through in physical. She's still my, my, my child in yeah, spirit, yeah. though. Yeah. I have yeah. never met a woman that has had a miscarriage that won't always hold a connection to to that to that spirit or that time or that circumstance or that feeling whatever it is so yeah. so it's interesting to know that yeah maybe we just have to surrender to the plan yeah. or, or something much larger than ourselves i uh I, you know i um i i'm, I'm not a, 
a, a religious man, but I'm a spiritual man and I believe in God and, and I believe that life is much easier when I surrender and have faith to the fact that, that uh, as Gabrielle Bernstein might put it, the universe has got my back. And uh, um, um, I appreciate that you're doing this kind of work with people because I, you know, I, I, this is where my practice is going as well, but obviously I, you, this is a hundred percent of what you do. And I'm glad that, you know, I have people like you to send people to and resources to send people to when, you know, it's, it's something that's beyond my scope or someone wants you and dives in with you. Like you said, you've got to choose, you know, what feels right for you go there. And so if this is, if you're here, maybe this is kind of part of your journey. Clearly it is. And if it feels right, what, what Sue has been talking about and what we've been discussing, um, feels right. Her exercise resonated with you. Um, Sue now is going to tell you how you can get in contact with her. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, cool. So the, if you're interested in specifically the fertility yoga and the one-on-one, -on -one, the baby session work, the baby spirit work, you can check out familypassages.ca. Okay. And if you want more of the, the heart-based work and kind of diving a little deeper that way, you want to kind of go get right in there and, and clear the blocks to, to love and to your intuition, then heartledliving.com is my new website. And it's heartledliving.com. Okay. I will uh, put, all, put those in the show notes and uh, there will be a transcription to this as well uh, in there if, uh, if there's anything you wanted to reread or, or pull little quotes out to put on sticky notes around your house. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll have that all up um, uh, right beneath or on the, on the beingfertileprogram.com if you're listening somewhere else or watching somewhere else. But uh, Sue, I, if there's any closing words you have, by all means. But otherwise, I am I'm so grateful that you uh, uh, agreed to be on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me. I, I loved I love that I saw your invite. It actually sparked a a very clear heart. Yes, for oh, me. Good. So it was it was very clear that I was meant to be here and share my heart with you and your listeners. And so my I though I do have kind of a message to kind of end with, and really. It's just an invitation for everyone to to practice and just know that is it is natural to be heart led. It is a natural process to intuitively lead through life and the miracles that come, that's the side effect. And I I would wish that for all of you. And if you need support then then follow your heart and you'll find those people that are meant to support you. It's like everything will be given. Everything will be given. And uh I just want you to hold faith. Faith, surrender. Great. Parting messages. Thank you, Sue. Thank you.